Good morning, my name is Butch Harper. Welcome to uh, Seeds of Hope. And today I will be leading the words of encouragement and once again referencing uh, New Morning Mercies by Dr. Paul David Tripp. Uh, just by chance, I'll be tailgating once again on Pastor Andy's past sermon uh, from this last week, uh, where he spoke about Job and the trials and tribulations that he went through uh, in parts of his life and how he was able to endure that. Uh, today, there's going to be a lot of scripture, uh, so more of scripture, less of me, all the more better. So let's go ahead and get started. I'd like to first begin with a scripture from James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Okay, the second one would be from 1 Peter uh, chapter 1, verses 6 through 7. This is your this is you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, that perishes through though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now what these two verses have is from the New Testament showing that we continue to go through the same types of trials and tribulations that Job went through. And being tested uh, if for our faith is one thing. Uh, but what I've gained from these scriptures is the word obedience. And obedience is an action. Uh, steadfastness is an action where faith is something that you believe or thought. That's the way that I interpret it. Uh, Dr. Tripp interprets it like this. Our obedience is never to be something that we expect a return on, but rather done in recognition for what you have already been given. And I believe that Ephesians chapter 1 verses 3 through 14 uh, explains this very well. So listen carefully as I read those verses. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before Him. In love, he predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having be, been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we were the first to hope in Christ might be the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance, until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. Now, what does this all mean? Well, here's the humbling and comforting truth of the gospel. Our obedience doesn't initiate anything. Your obedience and mine only occur because God initiated a redemptive process that resulted in our transfiguration and forgiveness. We don't obey to get his favor. We obey because his favor has fallen on us and transformed our hearts, giving us the willingness and the power to obey. God's work of rescue and forgiveness didn't begin just before you first believed. It didn't begin just before you were born. It began before the world was born. He placed his grace on you and wrote your story in a way that at a certain point in a certain time in your life, you would hear the gospel of Jesus Christ and believe. His love for you is never a result of your character. It is a clear demonstration of his. He granted you and me what we never could have. For our new life is his choice, his gift. This means that if you obey him for 10,000 years, 
you will have no more of his favor than when you first believed. Now that is truly grace. You know, on the way over here, I was riding with my grandson, Gavin, and uh, he had on one of his most favorite songs uh, the past, for the past month. They, they changed, uh, but it's called The Mountain of God by a Christian group called the Third Day. And uh, one of the lines in the chorus is that, after all I've been through, I come to realize the truth is that we all have to go through the valleys before we can stand up on the mountain of God. And folks, we're in a valley right now, and I understand that, and my heart goes out to the people who are suffering and doing without, uh, without friends and family and relatives around them to, to brighten their days, uh, without the jobs, jobs loss, health issues. But as a Christian, as a believer, as it was stated in, in the Gospels, our future is secured. We know how the story ends. And you have to be able to hold on to that, Lord. And that is the steadfastness that we're looking for. That is the obedience, to know that God has already got a redemptive plan in place for us. So we're going to be okay. Thank you and have a wonderful day.